These are one of the least expensive lithium iron phosphate modules that Battery Hookup is currently selling, and they're 8S, which means this makes for a great 24 volt battery, or if you're like me and you bought two of them, you can make a 48 volt battery. They're around 140, 150 pounds each. Uh, they're really easy to work with. I've already done some work on them, which I'll catch everybody up with, uh, but they're just gonna make a inexpensive battery pack, but they are used cells, so stay tuned for the capacity test so we can kind of find out how much life we have left in them. Here we go. Hi, I'm David and welcome to my channel where I'm on a mission to take my house and garage completely off grid. That means storing solar energy for use when the sun doesn't shine. And that's why I'm building out a server rack battery behind me and these are gonna go into that. Now these are lithium iron phosphate modules, eight cells in series and I got two of them to make 16S or 16 cells in series which will be a really nice 48 volt battery. The first thing everybody wants to know is how much did they cost? I spent $1,500 after shipping and discount and taxes to get this to my door, the two modules. They had to ship freight, so the more you buy, the more they can fit on one pallet, up to 16 modules. But of course, that is not the full story. At the end of this video, I'm gonna do a full breakdown of exactly how much it costs for not just the battery cells, but also all the accessory components to get this to a fully working battery. I've already done some work, so I'm gonna catch everybody up to where I am. Then we'll finish the build together by installing a BMS. Then we'll do a capacity test. And at the end of the video, I'll do a total uh, cost breakdown uh, to find out exactly how much this costs uh, based on the per kilowatt hour that we tested the cells at. The main positive and negative posts have a threaded nut behind them so you can easily attach your wire leads going off to your loads or I'll be attaching them to my BMS or battery management system. Every cell has a welded jumper bar going from one to the next making the series connection. Those welded uh, tabs here, they have three threaded studs on each one for attaching things like your BMS leads for measuring voltage of each cell along with temperature sensors. You can just nut them right down onto these threaded studs. In fact, that's how it came. The original battery pack had a bunch of thick wires on top for measuring the voltage of each cell, and that had a big Molex connector going off. I'll remove that, and then I'll remove all these temperature sensors, but I think I'm gonna leave this plastic tray in place. I think the new BMS wires that I put in can just sit right into that spot. Now the BMS that I'll be using came with these wiring harnesses, and the wiring harnesses are labeled with ring terminals. So I was able to put the ring terminal on the stud. I put down a fender washer and a, a lock nut on each one. So nice, quick, easy assembly. Now the wiring harness wasn't quite long enough to reach the last one. So on the very last cell, I did have to uh, solder on an extension wire of about six inches in length to get to the last cell. So now with all of our voltage sense wires in place, I'm going to check that they're all in the correct order, and then we can worry about getting our BMS in. Now for the BMS, let's take a look at it. Now this is a brand new BMS to the market that I think is gonna make a lot of DIY projects a lot simpler and easier. Uh, this is from Orient Power under their Jacoper line, and this BMS is labeled DIY BMS, and that was actually my suggestion to Orient Power. Orient Power sells a lot of batteries, and I've tested some of their batteries in the past, and they all worked great. I asked them if they could sell this front panel with the terminals, circuit breaker, on-off switch, screen, and the really nice BMS on the back side. And they agreed after I suggested labeling it as DIY BMS. So if you're interested in this, I have a separate link and discount code for this BMS uh, in the description below. And if you use the affiliate link, it does help out this channel. So thanks if you decide to do that. The front label on this BMS says it's 100 amp hours. That's how it's originally factory configured. Uh, you can actually use this straight out of the box without changing that. The problem is that the little state of charge reading that will be on the front display won't be accurate. But we can make that change with a software.
this BMS has lots of wires to attach. We have a main, we have a name, main positive to attach. Uh, over here coming off the PCB, a main negative. And then we've got one more power wire. This is the last thing to get attached. Let's talk about some of the steps you have to take when you first get these modules. First thing to do is take out a voltmeter and check the voltage of every cell. Make sure you don't have any single cell that's below 2.5 volts. Now you shouldn't because Battery Hookup is doing this step at their factory in Pennsylvania or their warehouse. When they get these uh, in big truck loads, they're going to take them off the truck, they're going to check each individual cell, make sure they don't have any dead cells in the module. If they do, they're probably going to be auctioning those off in a big lot, but they're not selling them individually. They're going to sell them making sure that you have uh, good cells. I'm about to start my first capacity test on these batteries, and I'll probably run at least two capacity tests just to verify the numbers. Uh, but we're all hooked up. Uh, I'm actually monitoring the BMS through this. Uh, this app on the cell phone is zeroed out. This is connected through Bluetooth to this Victron shunt. So it's gonna measure all the electricity flowing through uh, to the GrowWatt inverter. And then I'm just running through the charge verter into the other battery. Now we're running about 3,600 watts. Here we are. So we'll just let this run through and see what our capacity is. Okay, this battery just finished, and just two seconds ago I plugged that in so that the BMS would turn back on, allowing the shunt to be read. And 266 amp hours and 13.4 kilowatt hours. So that is the final number. And if we look down here at the cell voltages, looks like... Ah, alright, so... Cell one through six hit, I, I mean one through eight, cells one through eight must have hit the low voltage before the second pack. Uh, so that is this side here, must have hit the low voltage before this side. Uh, we'll have to make sure that they are top balanced, but otherwise this pack might be a little bit weaker than this other one. We'll find out when we charge it up again. I'm all done charging this battery. Over the last few days, I've been doing a few small cycles on it to allow it to uh, balance. And as you can see, the cells are getting much better than they were. You can see there's still a bit of a spread, 3.591 to 3.514. And there's all the cell voltages. Uh, but it's a lot better than it was, and I'd like to do my second uh, capacity test at this point. The first capacity test was 13.4 kilowatt hours, uh, but one of the packs, I forget which one, but one of the packs uh, hit 2.5 volts uh, per cell, while the other one was still over three volts per cell. Uh, now we should have a much better balance uh, cycle. So I'm gonna move this over into the uh, rack, and then we'll uh, run our second capacity test on it. I'm about to do the capacity test for this upper battery, and yes, all the wiring down here just looks like garbage. Uh, it's not going to evenly charge between the batteries on the bottom, but that's okay. We're just doing the capacity test on this upper battery. That's all we care about. I'm just moving the power from here, through the inverter, through the charger, and into the bottom three batteries, roughly. <laughs> We're moving the power into the bottom three batteries. Now, as the bottom three batteries charge, their voltage is gonna go up but the current is staying constant on the charger, which means the wattage being pulled from the upper battery will actually increase. So we're gonna let it run here. We're currently at 2.6 kilowatts, uh, but I suspect that's probably gonna go up as the uh, test progresses. So this is the important one, our discharged energy. 
And so that's what we're gonna be watching for. I'll let this run and catch back with everybody in roughly five hours. The second capacity test is almost done and it looks like spending all of that time to top balance the cells is paying off. This round is doing much better than the first one. So I can't wait to see the final results. The app for the Victron shunt shows 0% remaining. And so far we've discharged 274 amp hours and 14.1 kilowatt hours. We're at 47.53 volts. It's taken five hours and 20 minutes to get here. Let's check out our cell voltages. So the second pack is doing better than the first. We're probably gonna hit a low cell voltage on cell number four before anything else. The original parameter for this BMS had it shut off at something like 45 volts. I changed that parameter to 40 volts so we could drop this all the way down until a single cell hits 2.5 volts. This is really, really good. These are used packs and I would not be getting this good of a result if I didn't spend that much time top balancing. When I did the first capacity test, I had only spent about an hour top balancing. This one, I spent a couple of days letting it top balance and we're getting a much better result. 14.3 kilowatt hours is the rating for these being brand new and we might hit it. Right now we're at 14.2 kilowatt hours. 278 amp hours and 14.2 kilowatt hours. These cells almost performed as new, which was a lot better than I was expecting. That means we did about 99% capacity on this on used cells. It certainly took a lot of time. It was like three days that I let it top balance uh, using the eye charger. And then after using the eye charger a couple of times, then I let the BMS do it. If anybody is interested in purchasing the modules from Battery Hookup, they certainly are one of the quickest and easiest ways to build your own pack because the modules are nice 8S configuration. They have the uh, studs uh, making it really easy to just bolt everything on uh, so you don't have to go and solder or weld or recreate anything. Most people are not going to have a steel tray laying around, uh, but you can just do it like I did on this battery pack beneath it, and that is with a piece of fire treated plywood. So three quarter inch plywood could have easily held these and would have been uh, just as satisfactory for me. Uh, but I had the steel tray because battery hookup wound up uh, using it as part of the pallet when they shipped out some cells to me in a past order. For a limited time, battery hookup is going to give the viewers of this channel an extra discount if you use the discount code DAVIDPAWS, and that's for the modules. I also have a link and a discount code uh, separately for th these uh, BMSs from Orient Power. This is only a 100 amp BMS. Now that's okay in my setup because I'm paralleling so many batteries, but if you want more amperage out of the battery pack, I suggest you go with a contactor-based BMS like what I used in a previous video, and I'll leave a link for that as well, which you can purchase from Battery Hookup. Let's run through the numbers and see how much this battery cost. It was just under $2,000 grand total to build this battery, and that is 14.2 kilowatt hours that we tested. At that price, it's about $142 per kilowatt hour. Now that's really good, about 99% capacity in these used cells. That's about half what a server rack battery would cost if you purchased it brand new. But you have to take into account that there's no warranty and these are used cells, so they might not last as long. And you'll have to wager that into your own calculations on whether or not you want to go this route. Battery hookup says you should expect 90% or better capacity from them. Battery hookup will sell the individual 8S modules for $699. I bought two of them. I had to pay for a pallet, which was uh, $300 in shipping. And I got a discount. Uh, there is a discount code David Paws. And for the next 30 days, Battery Hookup is going to give an extra discount on top of the normal one for anybody uh, purchasing through my discount code. So we had about $1,400 in the modules, uh, minus the discount, and $300 in shipping. So we had $1,558 from Battery Hookup. Then I purchased this BMS from Orient Power, and I'll leave a link for that in the description below. 
Uh, so with shipping, that was $363. Uh, the only item that I had to purchase in addition to that was those fender washers for the BMS voltage leads. Uh, and then if you needed to purchase a plywood sheet, uh, that was another $60 for the plywood. For me, I had a free steel base that Battery Hookup sent me out in a previous order. So we're talking a grand total of $1,994 or $142 per kilowatt hour. Now, what if you wanted to purchase more than just two modules? If you wanted to make a whole server cabinet out of just these? Well, now the price gets a little bit better. If you want to make the price less expensive, you can purchase one of the BMSs through battery hookup. But let's say you wanted a bunch of this. Let's say you wanted almost 100 kilowatt hours. So you were gonna buy several of these modules. Well, you'd have to purchase 14 modules, which will create seven batteries. Uh, from battery hookup, those uh, 14 modules would be $9,786. Minus the discount code, shipping is still the same, $300. Battery Hookup says they can fit 16 of these modules per pallet. So it's a fixed shipping cost. For Orient Power, these, uh, these BMSs, uh, there's the discount code and then the shipping is still the same. They have a flat shipping on this right now, at least when I put in all the numbers into their website and uh, sample purchased these. And so that would be $2,244 through Orient Power, uh, plus the uh, washers and plywood. So you're talking a grand total of $11,500 or $117 per kilowatt hour, which is fantastic. And remember, if you purchase the more expensive BMS, it does support closed loop communication if you wanna set that up uh, for your inverters. All in all, this was a success, putting this battery together. It uh, is very cost effective and worked well. Uh, I'm glad that battery hookup is filtering out imbalanced packs and just selling the balanced ones because that's a way we can make sure we have uh, high quality batteries that we get. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.